Thanks for being here. We're uh, annually, we have a state of the university address, and there's a lot of statistics and facts and figures that we could put together today. Um, we have a staff and a faculty member on board committees where we talk about finances and facilities, et cetera. And so we um, know a lot about those. And I thought it would be best today and consult some of the cabinet who are here, and I thank you greatly to go over some of the major themes of accomplishments and talk about the center pull of our, our vision. Uh, you know, um, the really great speeches you think about, I have a dream and, you know, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask you to do for a country, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You go down and list these famous quotes. Nobody ever stood up and said, now I'm going to take you through a detailed strategic plan so you know exactly how we're going to get there or get to the moon by in 10 years. So we will have detailed strategic plans and there'll be particular pieces and parts that you'll be involved in putting flesh to it and giving energy. But I wanted to make sure as a community, our big goal today is to give some sense of what were the accomplishments of last year in terms of themes and people and talk very specifically about where we're going and how people can plug in in our role in making it happen. We have had quite a year, um, I think Mark Apple will put this together probably with the title, People Are Talking About Us. Whether you think of uh, more national championships in cycling and uh, Olympic type athletes, or you think about our medical school, we're now in the process of recruiting our four class. And some of you have been here a while, we talked about even creating such a preposterous undertaking and now we have medical students out in the community. When people are talking about us, it's pretty interesting to hear some, really, I, I just happen to know a lot of physicians, not because I'm sick all the time. Uh, <laughs> thanks be to God. That's not an accomplishment, I guess. But anyway, the, the fact is I know a lot of highly accomplished, uh, accomplished physicians now that are, have our students with them. And the type of comments, whether it be from a mission standpoint, intellectual preparation, or they can already do things, and I, I try to tamp it down when they compare them to other students, but I'm looking at Dr. Evans. It's very heartwarming when you know the kind of work and investment everybody's made. So up and down the line, people are talking about Marion and our science advancement and talk about our international studies, what we're doing in nursing here and other places I'll bring up. So basically the service, some of the characters, that uh, the character we display and, and some of the work we do and some of our students, it seems like no matter where you go, you hear about what we're doing as evidence to our students and our faculty and what they're accomplishing and staff. We continue to add new facilities. The new housing is 90-some percent full now. That's very good when you open up a new housing project. We're very happy about that. And we did that in the co-development with Browning and you know, that'll be ours, and that'll be a really good thing, and it's a sign that we have to keep building a community here at Marion. Alumni Hall, uh, you know, we talked for years. We'd come to these, the state of the university. When are we going to get a real student center? And uh, it's a good reminder to you pinch yourself a little bit because people would think that would be impossible at some points, or we're never going to have one, or we can't do this. Well, we do, and we did, and we'll continue I love our retention, uh, Ruth Rogers, and I know Ruth gets pretty nervous when I bring her up because she said, oh, Dan, there's this mammoth team, but I don't have everybody's name memorized, okay? But uh, Ruth led a team of folks some years ago. I would like to tell you that we didn't talk about it at State of the University Addresses. You know, when I came, a lot of you weren't here, but some of you were. Marion College, when I came, I remember there's an old phrase back from Nebraska, we were lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut. I mean, we were hurting. All right, that's a good descriptor. Can you kind of just see that? That's low. And uh, you, you could see a time, and I mean, not so much in mission or the good people I got to work with in the beginning till now, but in terms of our finances, et cetera. And we actually had a 59% retention rate, freshman to sophomore year. Now this year, we're at 794 I would like to point out that our goal was 76. We do like to exceed our goals here. Now, 
this is a good case in point where you could talk about numbers all day long, but let's talk about what this really means in terms of the student. The biggest trad one of the biggest tragedies going on today, if you want to worry about um, economic justice and opportunity and closing an income gap, how would you like to be a student with one or two years of student loans and no degree? How does that fare for a person? How does it fare for your psyche? You started something that didn't work. It doesn't work at all. How does that fare for our academic standing? You know, we're up to 24th in the U.S. News. I know some, we don't always agree that those ratings are important. But one of the big factors is your retention rate. That's how they rate you in those. As we want to be, we want to be a top academic institution. We don't want to be average. You can't do it if you don't have a retention rate. And then thirdly, and I'll show you a slide uh, later, the economic model really breaks down here if you don't keep your students. You spend a lot of money finding students, don't we, Luann? And we want them to graduate for their sake, for the perception of our institution, and for the economic model behind Marion. And look, and we'll talk about this some more, but look what happens when there's teamwork, best practices followed, determination, setting high goals, people working across department lines, you know, it takes a business office, it takes advising, it takes faculty, all of our warning systems now. It's a big effort. And I just wanted to point this out because maybe last year, this is the biggest thing we did. If you talk to a student, do you retain and graduate? If you talk about our economic model, if you talk about our mission, if you talk about the way we're seen in the world. I brought this up, I love to embarrass Andy Holman, but uh, he got a big national award for his and frankly, since I've been here, I've, I, I've really learned to admire a lot of people. Sorry for picking one out. But Andy had a vision what to do with theology and philosophy. And we've grown enrollment and the seminary is doing very well. And San Domingo Scholars and Rebuild My Church, that takes leadership. He got nationally recognized and that was very good. Really in, uh, liked that the other people see it. I'm not too sure I didn't pass up something there, but we'll have to, can't just dwell on Andy forever. Um, <laughs> Won't be able to get him out of the room. His head will get so big. These are pretty big hallways. But the uh, other thing I brought up is how we're doing in math science. We can actually take and beat the national, uh, your expectation by SAT and getting into medical school. We're starting to get a real calling card out there in math, science. Now, engineering, I think we have 14 freshmen in it. Dr. Andrew King's to, uh, to, uh, pushing them along nicely. They're very enthused, very talented students. So we, we have some things going in that area. I often with Griffin Elbert, I've mentioned him before. What an interesting story. Three years, got through his uh, undergraduate degree, admitted to a number of med schools, decided to study with us. He's just doing a great job. He's also playing football, which isn't too bad. Uh, Dr. Kershaw, we have a Learn by Doing School of Business. It has a calling card now. We're going to do more there, but they're very distinctive. Students are learning a lot. The, Business community is asking us for more students, like and more graduates. Um, we are an embedded principal training uh, project now with IPS, working in their difficult schools, advancing leadership. Dr. Farabee wants more leaders for schools. Good leaders make good schools. We're very much apart. Teach for America keeps booming along. Most schools of ed are shrinking. We're preparing more people now to teach and be principals, almost by a, a, a factor of four than we were. Uh, 12, 13 years ago. We're making a difference in all sorts of schools. We have principals, assistant principals, innovation schools, where a number of inner city schools where over half the faculty now are marrying alums. They're doing great work right where it needs to happen, where you really make a difference in the world. We're really showing leadership. Uh, Jonathan Lowry, I, bring, I brought him up the other day, but he is the co-chair of the American Society of Bone and Mineral Research. He's the co-chair of their Young Review uh, Committee. Now, Jonathan went to a school kind of like this, PhD from Vanderbilt, a couple, three years, Harvard postdoc, has great, this is the kind of faculty, and we're on the national stage in a lot of interesting areas, and we're taking leadership roles in that. And that'll help us as we develop our whole research agenda and what we're doing. This is the kind of talent we're bringing to the table here and that we're involved. 
Uh, next year at this time, we hope to have our CRNA program going. That's a nurse anesthetist, in case you don't know that. Our first group got through the Nashville program. We're growing not only here, or other parts with our partners in Ascension Health and St. Vincent's Health, and we're very proud. Uh, I mentioned giving. Uh, one of the key metrics of uh, an institution like our, well, every institution now is raising money if they can. We're really exceeding all metrics. We raise more money than uh, Butler, U of I, other people in town, and uh, we'll continue to do that. I mentioned at the opening session, we raised over a million dollars of cash per month last year and added six, seven million dollars in new pledges. So Dr. Britt and his team keep fueling the car there. This is out of order, but um, this puts us up on the number of uh, theology philosophy degrees, puts us six in the country, and we're probably the fifth largest college seminary. We didn't even have that, what, 12 years ago. It's pretty amazing how we've grown. Uh, this little guy I brought up, I won't go too much into it, but you know the story of Cole. Um, we not only do well academically and in terms of doing things in the community, we respond with character when there's need. We make a big difference. And we learn leadership from the littlest tykes around us. And, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, there was his brothers. And now I'm sure Cole smiles on our little gathering. But people do talk about us and what we do. I want to talk about moving forward. Um, I'm going to talk mostly today about our vision. There's some particular parts of our vision that are important in the strategic plan. I'll mention those. And a lot of you will grab the bigger buckets or bigger priorities in the strategic plan and figure out how to make it exactly work. Um, if we were going to take a big vacation, our big excitement wouldn't be about the detail of the plan of how we're going to travel across the country. It'd be about the larger purposes, to get some time off, to be with family, friends, to see beautiful things, to learn, to be inspired, to laugh, etc., cetera, and, and make a life worth living. Our vision to provide an education that distinguishes in our ability to educate transformative leaders. Um, as I said earlier, and I want to emphasize today, and I'll leave with the, with the traits that we all have to focus on, there isn't an institution in America that wouldn't say in some form or another they want to educate leaders. So we will have to take it to a very different level to make a difference. We have gone through a lot of discussions. A lot of you have been, you've been, all been invited at one time or another. What does it mean? Why would this be important? Should we do this? We basically look out in the world and our, the basic purpose of this institution is to advance human flourishing. And everywhere where humans flourish, there's excellent leadership. We've come to the conclusion that you can do this. You can actually recruit, invite people into our community, faculty, staff, and students who can go on this journey and make a difference. You can do this. And that if you concentrate on their ability to think and do and their character, they can be transformative leaders. And if this institution, if you look out in the world what's needed for positive growth, to alleviate negative things in the world, where leadership is excellent, good things happen in all those areas. Human flourishing is advanced. That's our business. What could we do to advance human flourishing? Build the biggest science lab in America? Oh, that wouldn't hurt. Or build the biggest uh, athletic complex? Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be good for us. Or the biggest this or the biggest that or have a, an endowment like whoever. Everything we're going to do is come around this idea that we need great leaders out there in education, health care, business, STEM areas, church work, ministry, social entrepreneurship. Great leaders change things. You've seen it around here. I showed you some of the pictures. I think of Dean Peterson. We had a cycling program. Now we have the cycling program. People contact us from around the world. We were good. Now we're great. A lot of people worked hard on it, but let's don't kid ourselves. Dean Peterson showed tremendous leadership here. This is how it happens. 
school struggle, children lost, live in poverty, can't find their way out. A great principal goes in there. Great teachers get a hold of them. Healthcare is a mess. It's way too expensive. The outcomes aren't good enough. What are we going to do? Physician leaders, nurse leaders, other specialties in that, people who know the business of health care, that's where we're going to be. I like this. I kind of want that medal to be gold. We're going to have to work on that, Mark. You know where it flashes? Gold? That's where we want to be. We have a calling as an institution. It was given, you, it's, in, it's a Christian inspiration, okay? The traditions in the Catholic faith, the Franciscan put a charism on it that's very special to us. Our religious order that founded us very courageously that we live and inspired by. So there was a calling to advance human flourishing. We see the need out there in the areas I've mentioned. And where leaders grab hold, not the kind of leader who stands up and says, I'm rich, I'm really, really rich, okay? And everybody else is an idiot. That's not leadership. That will get us nothing. Sorry if you support Donald Trump. <laughs> we got some classes you need to take. But anyway, <laughs> a little time in the chapel wouldn't hurt either. But anyway, the, there's a big need for leadership in the world. And where that happens, things get better for the human family. That's our calling. That's the need. Now, there has to be an economic engine around it. You can't do everything. You can't do everything at once. We're going to have to raise a lot of money. We're all going to have to be involved in it. It'd be easy to say we can't do it, but we've already proved we can do it. We can do things. The Marian Miracle has a, some more chapters to write. The first one came in the, during the Depression when they moved the college here. That was quite a chapter. We have more chapters together to write. But we have to pay attention to all three of these. And if we don't, we'll falter. The day we just worry about money, we're dead. The day we ignore prayerfully reflect on what we're called to do, what are our strengths, we're in trouble. The day we aren't looking at the needs in our world start just down the street, then we're kind of ringing hollow. The day we don't use the world as part of our classroom, we're missing an opportunity to really educate leaders. And that's what we're going to talk further about. Think critically, do successfully, be trustworthy. We use an athletic for doing, but that's certainly true in any kind of academic endeavor. I think those are our sondoms in the bottom, in case you can't see it. Discipline engagement, cooperation, partnerships. We will have to take this to a new level here, an innovation and teamwork. That's what we're going to have to do. We, we show some different, uh, soon this year, we'll see our sports performance center starting up. It'll be St. Vincent's and other groups working together. Everything we do will advance in a, in a cooperative way whenever ever possible. That's the future. In our neighborhood, in our city, state, world. We have some good examples where we've done well. Now, we have a wildly important goal, and there's a bunch of words up there, and I don't expect you to uh, read that. We should have done it differently. Our wildly important goal is very, very simple. And it's, we use the word WIG, wildly important goal. You could also say why important goal. Hardly a week goes by here. School of Ed, Leadership Academy, receive a call, we need more teachers. We need more principals. We need more help in education. Here in the inner city and around the state. Sometimes they have a warm body available for the job, but not a great one. People are begging us to be better partners with schools, Marion University. It's very, very important we do this. People said, we didn't just say, hey, let's build a medical school or let's expand our nursing program, or let's go to, we need your help. Healthcare, the baby boomers coming at the healthcare system like crazy. They need more people, they need physician leaders, they need nursing leaders, they need leadership in healthcare. The church asks his help with lay leaders in church. Church asks his help, we need more vocation, seminary, 
help with religious life. Not for profits all the time calling us. The STEM area is where we can make a mammoth difference. Right here in this community. People want us to do more in that area. People want us to do something about the socioeconomic gap in STEM. People who have traditionally been at the bottom of the economic ladder in this country are poorly represented in STEM areas. STEM areas pay well. We can do something about that. We live in a neighborhood where you can do something about it. It's going to be a long-term effort, and we're going to have to get involved. But you can't do that with the number of graduates we have today. So our wildly important goal is by 2025, we will more than double the number of graduates from Marion University, undergraduate and graduate school. And every person in here has a role in that wildly important goal. Why is the goal important? Because people are asking us for more leaders high-quality leaders, leaders that I can trust, leaders that can do, and leaders that can think. That's all they're asking us to do. And the numbers we're graduating now aren't going to fill the bill. This, will be, this wildly important goal will be hard. We will have to start new programs. We're going to have to expand present programs in quality so more people want to be here. It's going to be graduate, undergraduate, and our retention rates are going to have to be phenomenal. We no longer want to talk about increasing enrollment. We want to increase graduates who are transformative leaders. That's a different goal. That speaks to quality, it speaks to purpose, it speaks to our calling. Now there's a lot of text there, we keep it simple. Um, when we think about executing on this, we're gonna keep a very compelling scorecard. We had 600 and some graduates last year, I guess I should memorize that number. So it's more than double. So can we keep moving that up? What's your department's role going to be in that? It could be how you greet people, how we show off the campus. The product, uh, Dr. Wolston, I know, is working with a lot of our academics. Make sure it's very clear what we can do in your area for students. International program will be a big part of it. We'll have more students from all over the world here on campus. So we'll measure a scorecard in each area, and that'll wrap up into the whole. And we'll know where we're going, and we'll know, we, we got to know what one another's contributing to it. Master's degree in theology. What can we do in counseling? It's going to be very, I, I spoke with an expert today at lunch that's really working hard in this drug problem. We need more therapeutic counseling and intentional, and, and that's in our neighborhood. He predicts about 80% of the crime, senseless crime, is this dang drug and addiction culture we live in. When are we going to take care of that? He said, could you guys do more? How could, how could I help you do more in that area? It seems like you would be called to do that. I said, we are. And we have talented people who are working on it. And it's going, to be a, it's going to be a project. But if you're going to make a big change in this neighborhood, you can't just work in the schools. You can't just work with families, just churches. You've got to have jobs for people. You've got to work on the underlying problems of crime. We've got to show that we can go out and live in this area and actually test our knowledge against reality, our ability to do against reality like we do with reading and some of the great things we do. And where character plays and determination. Uh, the enemy of execution, you ever feel like this poor, my inbox? We just, you know what? My inbox is never that high. You know why? We have three of them now. Because I hate to see when you can't see over your desk. I said, Cindy, that's not good. So she gets another. Now we're up to three inboxes, and I got a basket behind me where I put stuff that I may get you. I'll guarantee you before I leave for Christmas, though, that'll all go out. Every year I do this deal where I fill that thing up and then I dump it out. I never get to it. But so actually, I have I have three inboxes and a basket now. So we're caught in a whirlwind here. And I'm just going to encourage you as leaders, you, you showed up today, so I expect you're the leaders among our leaders. We're going to have to pick and choose and do things that make sure we get to the wildly important goal or we could get exhausted spinning. We're going to have to choose what's most important to get to that wildly important goal because the world needs us to bring more leaders to the fore. That's where human flourishing will advance. We've picked... 
five power goals. They're fairly straightforward, and everybody in here will be part of an area that pushes these forward towards this vision that we launched for 10 years. Mission and identity, let's be who we are with great intent. How well do we educate the character, the outlook, the way of thinking of our people? Academic quality, their ability to think. We talk a lot about enrollment, what's in the processes, how are we going to make sure we're talking to the right people about what we want to do. Everybody, by the way, as we get more distinctive, say you want to come to Mary and we want you to be a leader in the world of business. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a CEO. We want you to be a leader. What's a leader? They think well, they can do their work, and you can trust them. Well, then we better work on the enrollment process. Who are we inviting in? How do we interview them? How do we accept them? How do we keep them? Where do we go to find these leaders? What are their attributes in high school? Let's make sure we're matching up students, whether it's a medical school or undergraduate or something. Anything we do here, let's make sure we match up exactly who we are, explain it with greater power to the right audiences in the right way. Leadership, we're going to create a whole area that helps with this leadership development template. The qualities and how you implement it, whether it be athletics, campus ministry, an academic program, or wherever. And finally, we want to expand resources significantly. Frankly, we've identified about $344 million of needs in the next 10 years. That's a lot of money. Some of my board members have called in counseling for me and my, my, my vice presidents. <laughs> Again, we, we've had a few counseling sessions over my time here. But we might as well do something big if we're going to spend our time here. And I don't know how we'll do that or if we'll do it. Some of, a lot of it will be fundraising. Some will be programs that run in the black. Some will be innovation, efficiencies, and partnerships. I don't know exactly how we'll do it all. Maybe we won't go as fast as I want. You know, that's God's problem. I know the calling's there. We're going to work hard at it. Some days we'll have things just fall in our lap. Other days we'll be in the mud, but we'll get back up and keep moving. Mission identity, we're going to increase Sundown and Scholars. It's working. We're going to create a legacy fund. Uh, Beth, my wife's here. Uh, we were down Sunday talking to a couple about that. I always make Beth nervous when we go to, out on a fundraising call because she gets nervous. I don't have any problem with it, but she gets nervous. And uh, we, we're going to ask people to help with a legacy fund. You know, I, interesting, uh, I really appreciate you sharing that, Dan. Our has, Hispanic Latino population is growing nicely. We're just shy of 6% this year. I think it was 3% maybe 10 years ago. This year we put over $1.2 million in scholarship money, institution money, in Hispanic Latino students. That's a growing population. We need to be moving into that area. That's where our leaders are going to come from. That's where our leadership's going to come from, and we've got to be there. So we chart this kind of stuff. We're going to keep charting it, invite people to give to these items, make a difference in the world. We're going to have better data about how do we measure character and people's outlook and sense of service and commitment to family and the kind of things we value. Academic quality, we want national recognition and some programs, and we can't do it all at once but we're going to have to move in some areas. STEM is, is prime for us. We can do some things in business. So we, over a 10-year period, different times, different priorities will emerge, and those will be difficult, and I'm going to let Dr. Anna King pick those out with his faculty. Because if it's a, you know, we're going to, we just can't do it all at once, but we're going to do some things. A high, we're going to implement a high-quality graduate culture. This institution has changed and will continue to change, so we're going to have to have a graduate System And I know, Dr. Hill, you're working on that, and we're, we're uh, forming up a whole search for an associate provost. We're going to build our infrastructure out to handle this. But in a big city like this, we can do some good work, and a lot of you have nice plans at different stages in development in this area. We'll have an outstanding uh, graduate culture, and then we'll globalize this campus. And Anthony's building up a team, bringing talented people in, which we appreciate, and we're getting donations in this area, and you're going to see tremendous growth in this. We just don't think it's practical to educate transformative leaders for the world that we live in today 
without a global sp perspective on campus. We don't think it's possible. I know you agree. So we're going to work hard there. Enrollment. We're going to achieve our undergraduate retention enrollment growth, create measurable and effective marketing program. That's easy to say. It's really hard to do, and everybody will have to be involved. We can't say Mark Apple and his friends over there will take care of it. That just won't work. It's going to take a team effort. And you can't tell Dr. Wilson, just bring me some more English people, will you? It won't work. We're going to have to have a really fine program and know who would be interested and make it compelling and keep statistics of why it works well for people. Employment, graduate school, satisfaction of our students and graduates. Leadership will advance our leadership academy. I don't think we get, I don't know, maybe it's circles I run in, but we need more leaders for education. Schools want us to help do in-service with their leadership, teacher leadership. How do we make our school better? How do we work with school boards? How do we work with superintendents? Where, where you have a consultant looking at all of our education programs, how do we organize that and move forward? What will it cost? What's the plan? We want a center for transformational leadership, and we're working on donors and how that might be and start a search for a vice president to lead that area. We think we can brand Marion University with a speaker series on leadership. It might be combined with our, our Luger and some other things we're doing, but maybe some things in the city, some things here where we're very much about leadership and lead the community in a conversation about leadership. Resource expansion, probably the most important resource that we have to... No, let's start here. It'll be our people. Are we developing people's leadership here on this campus? Attracting, there's going to be a lot of new people come to our team as we grow like this. If you're going to more than double your graduates in 10 years, you're going to hire a lot of people, which is really a splendid opportunity, frankly. You got to love talent. Like Drucker said, talent defines your organization's capacity to serve. We've got to develop the talent we have. We have to bring in excellent new people. We have to help one another be accountable, be focused towards our WIG. Effect efficient management. We'll have to, higher ed's become very, very expensive. We have a lot of families who want to be here and they're having a hard time figuring it out. We're going to have to figure out a way to be efficient and innovative. We'll... Uh, We'll have to do that every day, and it won't be much fun because it's going to require change sometimes where we share resources. Um, invest in innovation. We would like to have an innovation fund for every school. Some board members are going to lead this up. So the next time you come to Dr. Anna King or myself or someone else that you work with, and boy, I have a hell of an idea. If I just had a little money, we could get this started. We'd like to start saying yes to that. Just make sure you get a good return so the fund can be... <laughs> You know, we don't want to deplete it with the first bad idea here, but we, we, we're going to find innovation funds for every area, one to two million dollars, so it's sitting there with the deans and vice presidents so we can invest in things and make a difference. Um, we're going to implement a fundraising plan that's really big. Um, we're going to have to, we did great in our last capital campaign beyond any wild uh, imaginative idea, and it'll take even more in the future. We're going to have to, and we're going to need your help here. Our alumni will be key to this. A lot of you know our alums. How do we get them back involved? Whether it's $10 or $10 million, helping students get jobs, helping with the enrollment. They can help us in a lot of ways. Service. They can be mentors. There's a lot of different things they can help us with. We're going to have to have all hands on deck, faculty, staff, alumni, friends, and new friends. Um, by the way, that endowment increase we're looking for in our strategic plan goes from $60, $70 million invested now to $250 million by 2025. That's pretty aggressive. That's our hope. And that primarily will fund all this financial aid we're giving out. Most of the financial aid we give out today is not funded. That's a problem. We've got to have funds behind these grant awards we give, most of which is need-based money, people who need it to be here. By the way, one of the best ways you can affect our economic model here at Marion 
is make sure your program is very, very excellent. Families with wealth will buy excellent education at the price point. We need more students from educational connoisseurs that see the value and what we're doing. Make sure what you're doing is cutting edge, high value. They will pay for it. And that mixed with folks who need to be here but can't pay for it, it just makes the whole pie taste a lot better. Remember our economic engine. And then collaborative partnerships. I mentioned this before, but next June, the Franciscan institutions will be on campus. We'll have to work together, whether it's technology, um, retention, all sorts of ways, study abroad. And we're going to ask you to reach out to your colleagues in these other 21 institutions serving 55,000 students. How could we work together better? You're going to seek, I believe, and we can lead the way on this, like uh, health care and other areas, some consolidation where the back office operations are going to be shared. The high value operation, like working with our students, will, will be done on each campus. We're going to work towards that. Now, that's a mirror, by the way. How are we going to execute? It's, it's this simple and this hard. We're going against a lot of institutions that have a lot more wealth than we do, okay? And we're going to leapfrog them. Because some of the students who used to go to those places are going to come to our places because there's not more students. I mean, then, like, we're, going to, we're not going to double the graduates we have because there's more students. Students who used to pick other universities are going to start picking us. Now, how do we expect to do that? It's just like uh, in 2001. We couldn't even pay our bills. Our stack of bills was this high, and our income was only that high. That looked impossible. It was teamwork. It was everybody taking a responsibility and working together. It wasn't someone else's job. You know, you just don't work out of negativity. Everything's positive. You don't talk about, well, if we had their president or their board or if we had a $50 million, $100 million, $500 million endowment, that'd be easy. I don't even care about that anymore. I care about our calling, the need we're trying to fulfill, and pay attention to the basic economics. And everybody will have to be part of it. That's how we'll be successful. That's how we've been successful, frankly. The other thing I'd really like to emphasize is you can't talk about transformational leadership, educating those, unless we exhibit it. We have to exhibit it. Determination. We will have good days and bad days. We'll have great ex you know, innovation and some that we thought would be great and didn't work so well. We'll have times things look impossible and we'll have times we think we're the smartest folks on earth and everything in between, but it's determination, it's continuous improvement, it's staying after it. We have to model that for our students. Don't we see a lot of people, young people now, that the first time they hit a bump in the road, oh, I can't do that. That isn't what transformational leaders do. They stick with it. We need to model that. I would pay a lot of attention to exhibiting self-awareness to our graduates. Know what you're good at. Know what you're called to do as an institution, as an individual. Where are your gifts? Where are the talents of others? Appreciate it. Let people go together. Resourcefulness. We aren't going to have everything you need, ever. You'd be surprised to know this. There's people at Harvard bellyache every day because they just don't have enough resources. You'd be surprised to know that. They actually fight over things there. Well, while they're doing that, an institution like we can cooperate, use our values, and move forward and do resourceful, creative ways, collaborations. Sometimes we'll just pray through a tough time. We'll just figure it out, and there's a lot to be accomplished by being resourceful and creative. There are solutions out there that someone 5, 10, 20 years from now say, why didn't we think of that? Let's think of it. Do it better for less. The fourth thing is we'll have to exemplify. We say we have values here, and I know we're human. The better we live them out every day, Christian or not by your own faith tradition, 
There are some established Christian values, Franciscan values, Catholic values, you name the values, Judeo-Christian values. Can we actually exhibit the kind of character our people will need to be transformative leaders? Can we put it in our curriculum? Can we put it in our athletic programs? Can we put it in our witness of how we serve? And the fifth thing, and I think it's very important we always think about this because it will make us distinctive, and that's the why. This transformative leadership thing's a big deal. You won't see, you will see human flourishing where there's great leadership. When it's absent, there's problems. People suffer, and they're usually the folks that are most vulnerable and with less. And so as we take off on this new strategic plan, you'll be seeing it in your schools. The board's adopted a very strong outline. The detail of it you have to own and create. How we'll get this done, you'll have to own and create. You'll have to create your timelines, be clear about your needs. Where the needs can't be fulfilled right away, you'll have to be resourceful and work around it. But you'll own it. And together, though, we have this, this vision, this idea that wouldn't the world be better for folks if we had better leaders in healthcare and education and business creating jobs? And wouldn't they be better off if everybody got to partake in high paying jobs and new opportunities to advance human flourishing through science and other endeavors? And how can we all participate in this? Keep that wildly important why in front of us. Always show them there's got to be a big purpose in your life. Otherwise, you're going through the motions.